UF fans got some rough news just moments before the Super Bowl on Sunday as news of a departure from Coach Napier's staff broke. But what does this mean for UF and how quickly are they going to be able to address it? Let's talk about it. Okay, so here is what happened. Craig Fitzgerald, who is our new head of strength and conditioning, everybody has been raving about him for the past month that he's been on campus, is leaving UF and headed to Boston College with Coach Bill O'Brien. Okay, so listen, I know this sucks, right? And we will get into that in a second. But Bill O'Brien is his longtime friend, which is what Craig Fitzgerald said in his press release, and it's also what UF said in theirs, and he didn't feel like he could pass up the opportunity to go work with one of his best friends at his new position. The timing of this really sucks, though, right? Because we are just a few weeks from spring ball. This is the period of time where they should really, really be trying to bulk these guys up. It's a brand new strength and conditioning program that was being instilled. Um, You know, we have heard from numerous players that they feel like they're getting stronger, they're getting bigger, that this was part of the missing link for why they didn't play well last season. There's been players that have gone on record and said they felt like they got pushed around because they trained like a track team or a soccer team and that that was changing under Fitzgerald, that UF was doing uh, more heavy lifting. They were really training like an SEC football program. And I don't know about you, but that got me really excited. Um, The timing couldn't be worse for us. There's so little time to hire somebody. It's not the time of year that generally people are are switching positions. Billy Napier is in a hard spot because next season he's got to have to win, right? So there's not a whole lot of job security for whoever you're bringing in at this point. I mean, hopefully you bring in somebody really good and, and the job security follows because the team improves. But there is nothing that Napier can point to at this moment that says, Don't worry, you're going to be here for years. We've got this under control. Um, So it's it's a hard situation for UF to be in. And, you know, as a Gator fan, it hurts to see a coach leave for a same similar position at Boston College. Florida does not consider Boston College on our same playing field. We don't consider they're not a rival. They're not somebody who we watch on Saturdays if, you know, we just happen to be flipping through. They're honestly not a school that we give a whole lot of uh, thought to, right? So the idea that Florida lost somebody for the same job at Boston College, even if you're going to be with your best friend, definitely stinks. And it, it stings, right? particularly somebody as good as Craig Fitzgerald. He is really well known in the NFL, really respected. There are players here. We're super excited to work with him. And the changes that were already happening definitely makes this a big loss. So what Billy has to do now at this moment is move quickly. What you don't want to do is lose any of the momentum that the team had gotten from Craig Fitzgerald coming in. They just finished what Billy Napier refers to as phase one, which is building the foundation of your team. We can only assume that that means some of their toughest and hardest workouts because they're trying to get them ready to play four quarters in the SEC when August rolls around. So you're just starting that phase two. So you got to find somebody quick that can hop right in and continue on the same path. And, you know, part of the concern for me is that Hawk is still on the staff. So is it easier for Napier to say, okay, Hawk, you just take over for a little while while I look? I feel like that's dangerous, right? If we have decided we need something different, then we need to stay consistent with that and we need something different. If you think about a lot of the old issues that were complained about, it, it was that we didn't lift heavy enough. We were not explosive on either line. We never dominated players. We were in shape. I don't think you watch a single Gator game from last year and see people out of breath, even in the fourth quarter. But I also don't think you look at any game last year and say, man, those players are tough as nails. They just absolutely dominate their opponent. That is something that has been missing. That is what Craig Fitzgerald was brought in to fix. That is what he was working on fixing. So it just has to be 
to be so careful to not fall back into that rut that we were in. And, you know, I have given Napier props on this show before props for realizing that this is this is a change that needed to be made. Props for going out and getting somebody who is top in the industry. Props for recognizing a deficiency in your program. Those are all important things. And Napier did that. And now he's going to have to make another big hire. And, you know, I've also said on the show, I think Craig Fitzgerald was probably the most important hire of the off season because this is the captain of your ship for seven months, right? This is the guy that builds your team. This is the guy that going into the fourth quarter tie ball game, it's what he instilled at your players that you hope is going to be the difference. So is there another guy like that out there that Billy can convince to come to UF? Uh, You know, again, the most important hire that he's going to make now for a second time this off season. There is no offensive coordinator coming in. Those are Billy Napier's own words. He said that he thought about a whole lot of different scenarios, worked through, you know, a bunch of different things and has just come to the conclusion that he is going to be the person calling plays next year. So the budget here should be pretty much wide open, right? Uh, And I, I would think that there is some money to throw around, uh, to, to pay whoever they need to pay to get here. Now, I'm assuming they will also have a buyout that they will need to pay, particularly because of where we are in the calendar year. So UF has got to be prepared to take that on as well. But they should have a pretty decent budget to work with here to make a splash hire. What Napier does and how quickly he does it is going to mean everything. Hires in the past for Napier have been slow. This one cannot be slow. But the flip side of that is you also don't want to rush and make a bad decision. So this is not a fun position for Billy Napier to have to be in. He thought he already handled this, right? And and honestly, uh, other than Bill O'Brien getting this Boston College job, I don't think we're sitting in this position. I think he did a great job. He landed the man that he wanted and improvement was happening. So it stinks that he is having to do this all over again. But this is a critical decision in whether or not Billy Napier is successful long-term as the head coach at the University of Florida. This hire is going to go a long way in determining that. So hopefully a name is going to be identified maybe even this week, a hire made quickly that guy brought to Gainesville so that we can continue to capitalize on the positive momentum that is happening in the weight room. Because guys, it is happening. All you have to do is look at our current players' social medias to see how into this off-season workouts they are this year, how much happier they are about the way things are going, how much tougher these workouts are. So you got to bring a guy in that doesn't skip a beat. So what do you guys think? Do you think UF is going to be able to move pretty quickly here? Do you elevate somebody into this role? Is there anybody that you would like them to target? Honestly, I'm hoping some of the assistant strength coaches from Alabama that they interviewed this last time around are potentially willing to make the jump, particularly after all the things that happened with Saban. I don't even know where those guys are at the moment. So if I'm Napier, those are the things that I am revisiting. I'm also looking to see who are some of the successful strength coaches that were at Florida and where are their assistants now? Because those are guys that I, who worked for Savage, where are they? And would they be willing to come be a head strength coach at the University of Florida? I know Matt Bayless is probably one of the most um, well-known guys underneath Mickey Marotti. He's at Notre Dame now, but he is that successor to Mickey Marotti. He watched what he built and then replicated it. Let's go find one of those guys. I think that that would make it so that UF could continue on without having to really start from scratch again. All right, let's talk about all of this down in the comments. Let me know who you want to hire, who they should go after. Is he going to go fast? I appreciate you guys as always. And don't forget, go Gators.